Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today's topic is linear equations. Well, linear equations are really simple. There is nothing um, much which we can really discuss in this particular lecture. Still, I will try to, um, to present something which might be interesting. Um, I doubt it will be new, but at least interesting about linear equations. So, what is a linear equation? Obviously, this is something uh, of this type. Well, the first question which comes up um, when you are um, talking about any equation, actually, including linear, is what's the domain where we would like to look for solutions of this particular equation? Um, as you understand, it can be different, and certain equations might or might not have solutions in this or that domain. For instance, um, if I'm looking for a solution to this equation in the domain of integer numbers, which means I'm looking for an integer x, which is multiplied by 2 plus 3 gives 0, gives zero there are no solutions here. If, however, I'm looking for uh, a solution of this equation in the domain of rational numbers, then yes, obviously, x equals to minus 3 second is a solution. But this is the rational number. So um, in the domain of rational numbers, there is a solution. Now, what if I will uh, ask about this particular equation? And I will tell that I'm looking for a solution in the domain of rational numbers. Well, we all know that square root of 2 is irrational number, so there is no solution in the, in, in the area, in the domain of rational numbers in this particular case. But in the domain of real numbers, the solution is, and x is equal to minus square root of 2. And obviously, uh, the same um, can be actually said about complex numbers. If I'm looking for a solution to 3 plus i times x minus 2 times i minus 7 equals to 0, well, obviously, uh, the solution to this particular equation does not exist in the domain of real numbers, but it does exist in the domain of complex numbers. Okay, so this was just an illustration of certain, um, I would say, peculiar things which might happen with uh, solutions. And actually there are quite a number of very interesting problems um, related to this particular topic. Um, for instance, you can um, have the problem solve this particular equation in the domain of uh, let's say, integer numbers. So that actually presents a certain problem. I'm not talking, obviously, about linear solutions. They are easy. But there are some more complicated um, equations where this definitely can be applied. All right, so one important topic right now is that we always have to consider what's the domain of our equation. Now, for for this particular lecture, I will always use the domain of real numbers uh, for different reasons. Um, primarily because it's most frequently occurred case. Um, and uh, also I would like to present certain graphical representation. And graphical representation is obviously related to real numbers um, because real numbers are mapped exactly to all the points on the line, on the x-axis and the y-axis. All right. Now, um, is any equation of this type is a linear equation? Well, strictly speaking, no, because we have to put a condition. A is not equal to 0. Now, we will consider separately a case when A is equal to 0 a little bit um, later. But right now, we should assume that A is not equal to 0. Also, we assume that both A and B 
are real, real numbers, and x belongs to uh, domain of real numbers. So these are assumptions which um, I'm staging right now on the onset and uh, keep it in mind and now we will go with uh, easy solution to this equation in this particular case. Obviously we have to apply transformations as usually to solve the equation and the first transformation should be I am converging both sides by subtracting b. Transformation which corresponds to each number, that number minus b. Now, if I will apply this transformation to the left part, I will obviously get this, and right part will give this one. This is obviously reduced, so we have a times x equals to minus b. Next transformation, again, quite obvious, I divide by a. Now, that's exactly where a not equal to 0 comes handy, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this. So applying this transformation, I'm getting x equals to minus b over a. That's it. No more than that. Simple, uh, straightforward, without any kind of... Uh, losing solutions, gaining solutions, because all the transformations are invariant, considering a is, equal not, is not equal to zero, as we have assumed from the very beginning. So everything is okay in this particular case. Now, our next job is to represent this particular equation and its solution uh, geometrically using coordinate axes. So let me just write down only the solution to this equation. x is equal to minus b over a. And let's go to graphical representation. Now, let's start with y is equal to x graph. And next we will go to y is equal to a times x. And next we will go to a times x plus b. So these are three steps which we are going to make. Well, y is equal to x. Everybody knows what that is. This is a line which bisects this straight angle and this is 45 degrees. So we all know that. This is y equals to x. Why? Because obviously for every x, if I will go up, the length of this will be exactly the same as the length of this. If this length is x and this length is y, then y is equal to x. So for every point here, this is an obvious property. Okay, now what happens if I multiply by a? Well, let's consider two cases, three cases actually. Um, a is equal to zero, which we have assumed in the very beginning, which it, which it is not. But here I would like actually to, to present the graph with a equals to zero, and then the positive a and the negative a. Now, with positive a, it's actually quite simple, because right now, if this length and this length are exactly the same, so this is x, but now I don't want x, I want a times x, which means this length becomes a times longer if a is greater than 1, or shorter is if a is, is less than 1. So we right now assume that a is positive. Let's say if a is equal to 2. Well, the graph will be twice as steep. So instead of this line, so I will get up to this. And the, the function will be like this. So this is y is equal to 2x. Now, if my a is, let's say, 1 half, this um, segment becomes smaller 
uh, it will be half of this, and the function will be graph will be like this. So this is y is equal to one half x. And now you understand basically the principle. <clears throat> um, the larger a, uh, the steeper this particular um, line goes. And the smaller a, it goes more like a more horizontally. And and here is uh, when a is equal to zero. When a is equal to zero, it just coincides with this line. So this is y equals zero times x, which means for any x, y is equal to zero. So every point on this particular x-axis is actually a representation of the graph y is equal to zero times x, or y is equal to zero, basically. That's what it is. Now, let's move for, uh, uh, further down. If a is negative, well, quite obviously, if a is equal to, let's say, minus 1, so y is equal to minus x, it will bisect this angle. So this will be y is equal to minus x. And same thing here. This will be y is equal to minus 1 half x. And a steeper one will be y is equal to 2x. All right, so we have all the different angles depending on the a. And I would like actually to have only one. We have too many lines here. You understand the point, so I will just draw one particular line with one particular value of a. I'll choose the positive a because it's easier, but it doesn't really matter. So again, this is my graph, and this is y is equal to a times x. This is 0, this is x-axis, this is y-axis. All right, now, so we finished with this one. How about this? Well, obviously, again, every y is getting lifted by b up. Well, up if b is positive and down if b is negative. Let's assume b is positive, and uh, then the whole thing becomes like this where this particular point on the y-axis is basically the b. We took this line and shifted it up by b. So this particular segment is always b. So this represents the function a is equal to uh, y is equal to ax plus b. That's exactly what we wanted to build And now, when we have actually when we have this graph, now we can solve graphically the equation a x plus b is equal to zero. If this is a y is equal to a x plus b, question is when y is equal to 0. Because when y is equal to 0, that actually means that ax plus b is equal to 0. So under what conditions y is equal to 0? Well, obviously, if this is all the different uh, values of y, then y is equal to 0 is this one. So this particular point, point represents y is equal to 0. And question is, what is x in this particular case? Well, again, let's make a, a slightly better graph. Not better, I'll just clean up this piece, which we don't need anymore. Okay. Now, we know that this particular uh, segment is equal to b. Now, this particular segment is that particular x which brings y to 0. So what's the ratio between this segment and this segment? Well, let's put point M. This is B. And this is point M. 
So what I'm interested right now is what is OM ratio to OM? Well, remember when A was equal to 1, um, it was bisecting, the line was bisecting um, the straight angle and uh, and these two segments were always equal to each other. And for any A, um, the, the line actually stretched upwards. Uh, so basically what it represents, it represents that the ratio becomes, instead of being 1, in case A is equal to 1, it becomes whatever A value is. So this is always A. That what it means to stretch it uh, vertically by a if you multiply um, a by x. So in this particular case, since the ratio between this segment and this segment is a, now O m is equal to b, and O n is equal to that particular x, which is a solution to our equation when a x plus b is equal to zero. Well, obviously from here. And x is equal to uh, b divided by a. Now, we have here a slight difference between this and this. Now, why is this such a case? Because you see, x is um, actually to the left of the zero. So I shouldn't really say it's x, it's the absolute value of x here. And b, again, is considered positive, so I have to really use only positive values here if we are talking about geometry. But um, in real life, if you will take a look at this particular b and this particular x, you see that x is negative and b is positive. So that's why we will get rid of all these um, absolute values, my x is really negative, and to get it positive I have to multiply it by minus 1. And that actually corresponds to this formula. So this is a graphical solution in case a is positive, b is positive, x actually becomes negative in this case. So a is positive because we have it steeped that way, because if a is negative it will be the other way around, and b is positive, it means we shifted it upwards. And that would shift the solution to the left of the zero to the negative values. So that's basically the graphical representation of the solution. Now let's go back to a small case when a is equal to zero. I promise to consider it, and I will do it graphically right now. Again, this is not a real linear equation. However, from the general um, approach to use the graphics for solving these particular equations, we can say the following. What is y is equal to 0 times x plus d? Well, you remember that y is equal to 0 times x, which is 0, is the horizontal line which coincides with the x-axis. And if you plus b, if you add b to this, it will be the line which is parallel, and the b is this particular segment. Okay, now, what is the value of x which brings y to zero? Well, as you see, we never cross the x-axis, which means y is never equal to um, zero which means that if b is not equal to 0, if b is positive or negative, um, it basically means that there are no solutions here. So obviously, if b is not equal to 0, there is no such y which can bring it to, which, which can bring it to 0. And finally, if b does, um, if b is equal to 0, we have a solution actually of this particular equation. Now think about this. 
this in the line which is exactly coincides with x axis, which means it's always equal to zero. So no matter what x is, y is always equal to zero, which means we have a, a, an infinite number of solutions. Any x is basically a, a, a solution. So if a is equal to zero, we have either no solutions at all, if b is not equal to zero, or infinite number of solutions when um, when b is equal to zero. So it's not really an interesting point to consider um, about this particular case. So that's why <clears throat> in the very beginning, at the onset, we are stating that a is not equal to zero to make it a real equation. That's what actually is important. A real equation always has uh, a solution in this particular uh, case when a is not equal to zero, and it's only one solution. Well, that concludes this um, exercise about linear equations. Thank you very much.